Can you not afford fishing gear? Are your pockets broke? Are you poor? Do you, I'm just, <laughs> are you poor? That is so bad, I, I didn't mean it like that. Because we are stuck inside and we can't go make some fire fishing videos today, I wanted to make another video on how you guys can save some money. I know you guys really liked the videos that I made on like, the best spinning combo you can get and I did another video on like how you guys could get fishing rods for a cheap price If you guys don't know what I'm talking about and you're new here Just hit the link down below and uh, you guys can go ahead and watch that and then come back to this one Or just watch this one because this one's just gonna be just as fire because you guys like those other videos I decided I'm gonna give away more of my secrets now I'm calling them secrets and maybe they're not secrets to everyone but these are simply ways that I wrapped my head around fishing when I was younger. If you're younger and you don't have a lot of money to spend, or if you're new to fishing and you don't know much about it and you don't want to spend a lot of money, uh, this is going to be perfect for you. So when I was younger, I did not get things handed to me, guys. I had to work really hard for my stuff. My parents did not hand me money. If I had money, it was because I got like a gift card for Christmas or grandma gave me birthday money or something like that. So me loving fishing so much as a kid, I literally maximized every way that I could to get more tackle, to get better gear, and to just go fishing in general. So I would ask for stuff for my birthday, literally dig up any cash that I could and just figure out how I could take a couple of dollars and get everything with it. And uh, I spent my whole childhood literally riding a bike around with a fishing rod just to go fishing up until pretty much I got my license. Today I have a couple of ways that you guys can save money when it comes to buying fishing tackle. Now not only are you going to save money doing this, but you're also going to kind of figure out what kind of fisherman you are, you're going to be able to figure out what you like to fish, and you're going to be able to just you know, have more things in your tackle box. And before we get into this, guys, I want everybody to know I have to make this very clear. No brands pay me to do this. I am not here to bash any brands. Every brand that I'm going to be sharing with you guys today is a brand that I currently have in my tackle box. And um, I used some of them when I was younger and I use some of the other ones currently now. Um, this complete unbiased opinion. Everybody's entitled to their own opinions. So if you guys don't like this video, don't watch it. But if you think this is awesome, give it a thumbs up and we're gonna get onto it. So as you guys can see, I have my laptop in front of me and I'm gonna be going over a few baits and their prices and a little bit of information about them and why I chose them, etc. I'm not gonna give a million out there. These are just some brief um, examples of how I can do this. Now originally I wanted to go into like the actual tackle stores and show you guys firsthand so that if you guys wanted to go out and buy them you knew exactly what they looked like but unfortunately in the process of trying to do this I kept getting kicked out for filming. So the first thing that I'm going to talk about here with you guys is a stick bait. Everybody knows what this is. If you guys bass fish you're going to know right off the bat. I've also done some videos on it. It is the Yum Dinger, the Cinco, the Notorious Stick Bait. I would imagine that this is probably the most used and most popular just typical bass fishing bait on the market out in the industry. I don't know what it is about the design, but it's crazy. Now this bait is the biggest factor for me. This bait got me into bass fishing. This was the first bait that I ever fished that like blew my mind and that I caught a ton of bass on. My neighbor gave me a pack of these, I fished with them. I was catching a ton of bass and I was like, oh my gosh, I need to get my hands on more of these. Well, I only had a few bucks, okay? And I was like, like how, how am I gonna get these? I have a Kmart down the street that sold them. Let's see how many I can get. So, um, you know, when this whole ordeal happened, my neighbor had given me Yanomoto Cinco's. Not bashing Yanomoto, I currently use them today. They are a great bait but they are expensive guys. You're looking at about $8.99 for a pack. As you guys can see right here, um, they range, depending on the size and the color, $6.49 to $8.99. When I go up to Dick's and buy the five inch ones, they are $8.99 and that's $9 for a pack of baits is expensive guys, like it's expensive. So I resorted to buying the Yum Dinger. The Yum Dinger costs $2.99 and you guys are probably like, oh, how is that such a hack? It's just a cheaper version of that bait. You guys got to think outside the box, okay? So a Yum Dinger is a good alternative. Why? Because it's cheaper, but also because it works. It's a very good bait. If you guys don't believe me, look at the video down below. I also have in my description where I compared these two baits next to each other. Uh, yes, they have differences, and yes, you know, people like one better than the other. But for $2.99, let's round that to $3, you can get three packs for the price of the expensive Yanomoto Cinco. Three, six, nine. So you can pay 
$8.99, aka $9 for one pack of you know one colored Senkos, or you can buy three packs of three different colors or three different size Yum Dingers. I mean, that's a freaking hack right out of the book, guys. So what I would do is I'd ride my bike up to Kmart, I'd take my $10 that I made from grandma or cutting the grass or whatever it was, and I bought three different colors. I bought four inch, I bought five inch, or I bought two packs of these and I was able to buy hooks. And I would just go out there and fish these things until the death of them. Um, why the Yum Dinger in particular? Because I know there's other brands out there that have cheap ones too. The Yum Dinger is just like the beefiest Cinco out there in my opinion. This thing, like you can catch a bunch of fish on it and it really doesn't give out. Um, so yeah, that, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not going to get into details why they're better. Yanomoto, you guys, you changed the industry. Gary Yanomoto created this bait for the most part, the design of this bait. And uh, unfortunately, I just don't think they're that affordable and I'd rather just get more bang for my buck. Moving on to another bait that I fished a lot and all guys across the industry fish a ton, whether you're an expert fisherman or not, is going to be a cross. A lot of you guys are probably familiar with this exact bait and it is the Strike King Rage Tail. This was another bait I fell in love with learning how to fish and it was a great jig trailer and it was a great uh, crop bait. And uh, as you guys can tell, they're not insanely expensive, but they are about $6 a pack. Um, $6 when you get different colors and you go through baits a lot, adds up real quick, especially if you have a box of jigs and you wanna tip all your jigs, you know, that's it adds up real quick. And uh, yeah, so the alternative I found for this guy's, it's not too much cheaper, but it worked literally the same for me all the time and that was another bait by yum and that was the yum christy craw so i'm gonna pull this up here too um it's two dollars and 99 cents so again same thing as the dinger or the cinco you can maximize your spending maximize your quantity maximize your color just for a simpler price that looks almost identical i mean if you guys can see the difference between these two this bait looks pretty similar there's you know slight differences but you know what it's just it works just as good in my opinion so you can get you know two packs of these yums which would be six dollars for the one price of the strike king rage tail moving on to a third i'm going to do four in total here so i don't want to put you guys to sleep the purpose of this video is literally to get your heads just thinking and get your heads fired up on how you can you know do this kind of stuff so let's go to the uh, you know, another bait that tons of people fish. I love fishing these things and it is paddle tail swim baits. I use them as trailers for chatter baits, trailers for spinner baits. I use them just as is and they became a big part of my tackle box. I was buying Kitex like crazy. If you guys don't know what Kitex swim baits are, um, they're just one of my favorite paddle tail swim baits. And I was also fishing biospawns. Now these guys range anywhere from six dollars to eight dollars for i think five or six in a pack of them and those things i was going through them like crazy they don't last that long and six dollars six dollars six dollars added up real quick next thing you know every time i go to the tackle store i'm spending 50 bucks and it was driving me insane um where i'm at right now in life yeah i buy them i do buy biotech i uh, biotechs i do buy kitex and uh, bio spawns that's what i fish currently but when i was younger i found ways to get around that and um, I'm just gonna throw this tip out here. So I guess let's say official tip number two. There's always going to be an alternative for every bait that you guys like. Odds are Bass Pro Shops, Cabela's, uh, actually they're the same company now, um, random tackle shops. There's always somebody out there who makes like a knockoff version of it for a cheaper price. Uh, in this scenario, I'm looking at Cabela's. Cabela's makes this bait. It's called the Eco Pro Swing Shad. Um, and it is just a pack of swim bait sets or paddle tail swim baits that is similar to um, the biospawns and the Kitex. This guy is, again, $3 for a pack of them, and uh, same reasons that I said for all the other ones. I'm gonna end up linking all these down below for you guys so that you can see, uh, but yeah, there's that. And then the last one I'm gonna show you guys before I put a recap on this video, and uh, that's going to be spinner baits. Spinner baits were literally the first thing that I as a kid, I as a beginner, ever learned how to use. My uncle gave me a rooster tail um, and then I worked my way up to spinner baits. Spinner baits are, in my opinion, the best way to get on bass if you have no idea what you're doing. You can't really screw it up on an intermediate level. You literally cast that thing out there, you reel it straight in, the fish annihilate it, you can't mess it up. But you can also get on an expert level with it where you can get into heavier baits. You can tip them with 
you know, paddle tails and stuff like that where you can make them so complex that they will be more enticing to bigger fish. And uh, there's just certain times of the year that they shine and at the end of the day, you can pretty much fish them, you know, throughout every season and still catch fish. So, this being a huge factor in my life, I became obsessed with Booyah spinnerbaits. I still fish Booyahs currently and I own a ton of them. But Booyahs range anywhere from about $6.50 to like $10 and they add up real quick and they will kill the wallet. So as you guys can see right here, this is the spinnerbait or one of them that I enjoy fishing. This is just a random Google ad. Uh, and this is $7.29, so you're looking at eight bucks for you know a Booyah spinnerbait. And it's a quality spinnerbait, don't get me wrong. Uh, so there's a couple other ways that you guys can go about this. The first one that I found, it's notorious, it's all over YouTube, there's videos on it and everything, and that is the wonderful Walmart $1 spinnerbait. Uh, do I advise on these things? I wouldn't say go get them, like I don't fish them anymore, but when I was younger, they worked, man. You, There's videos that prove it, they will catch fish. Um, and it's just, they, they get it done. So if you guys only got you know a couple of quarters in your pocket or something, you need to get a spinnerbait, go over to Walmart, you can get buzz baits and spinnerbaits for $1. Uh, yeah, it's just a single Colorado blade, but I, got, I guarantee you, you'll still catch fish, um, you know, fish on it. That's literally the all time cheapest alternative. Moving on up to another brand. I think they're kind of newer to the market, but I actually currently use them in my tackle box now. And that is Jawbone. Uh, Jawbone, I've seen them at Dick's Sporting Goods. That's the only place I know of them at. Um, but they make a spinner bait that is actually pretty decent. I do fish them now. So these are $2.99 and you can get them in you know pretty much every color. And they're a pretty darn good comparable spinner bait. So I'm gonna show you guys this right here. Here is the jawbone and then we'll go over to you know the ones that I like and that is the uh, Booyah. So they're not too far off from you know what they look like. Uh, but do they fish the same? I don't know, I don't have them side by side, but I've caught fish on every single spinnerbait there, whether it was the $1 spinnerbait, the $10 spinnerbait, or the $3 jawbone. So yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. The overall purpose of this video, I know it was kind of all over the place, but the overall purpose was to get out there and think of different ways that you guys can get your hands on fishing equipment. Is the cheapest thing always the best? No, is having the most tackle out there the best thing? No, we're fishermen, we buy a ton of stuff anyways, um, but it has nothing to do with how much you have or what you have, this, that, and another. Everybody has a different situation, whether you can buy cheap stuff or expensive stuff. The message that I'm trying to get across is don't be discouraged to get out there and fish cheaper stuff. Don't be discouraged to have to buy the cheaper stuff. I can guarantee you guys that they're gonna work just as good and all that matters is that you're getting out there, that you're learning, that you're figuring it out because you gotta start somewhere. I've literally, you know, I've been fishing for, I can't even, I can't even tell you how long. I've been fishing since I was, you know, probably like 10 years old, I'm 22 now. And I've used the cheap stuff, I caught fish, and all that stuff got me to where I am today and the knowledge that I have today. It was just research and getting out there and putting myself in the position. And even to this day, guys, I have thousands of dollars worth of tackle and expensive spinner baits, expensive stuff. I've gone and fished with my friends who laugh at me for spending the money and they'll use their cheap stuff and they've outfished me before. It has absolutely nothing to do um, you know, with the stuff. There's no videos out there that prove that expensive baits catch bigger or more fish than the cheap ones. It all comes down to getting out there, getting involved, and just knowing what to do. There's beginners here on YouTube. The main purpose of YouTube, I believe, is to watch good content, but also to learn and to grow in what you love to do. Do I buy more expensive stuff now? Yes, but I have a full-time job and you know I'm older and I figured that out. So I have reasons for what I buy, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you suck at fishing because you don't have expensive stuff. Yeah, whether you guys have a ton of money or your parents are giving it to you, whether you have a couple dollars or you know gift cards to your favorite places, this is a couple of ways that I think you guys can wrap your head around, or maybe you should just think about it. Even if you guys are fishing tournaments and stuff like that, there's nothing wrong with having quantity over quality. It's not always the best way to go, but if you think about it in the right way, sometimes it's more beneficial. I think sometimes it's just better to have different colors and different sizes than it is to have the most expensive thing out there because every day the bite is different, every day the fish are on a different pattern, and you gotta go figure them out. So uh, yeah, there's some advice for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys do like these fishing hack videos, leave a comment down below. If there's anything in particular you want me to focus on, whether it be tackle or rods or just any kind of update on anything, let me know down below because guys, 
I'm not a big schemer, but when I was younger, my head was crazy. Like I found ways to get things that I always wanted just because I was super motivated. That's all that it comes down to. If you guys want it, you can go get it. You just gotta figure out how to do it. And that doesn't mean steal or anything like that. Cause no, I did not do that. Don't think that and don't go steal or anything like that because it's not the way to do it. If you do it the right way, you can have anything that you want. You just gotta be smart about it. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button, drop a like on this video and uh, hey, you know the deal. We'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.